On Monday evening, Gordon Lightfoot passed away at the age of 84. Lightfoot was a giant in the folk world, writing songs that have been covered by the likes of Johnny Cash, Judy Collins, and even Bob Dylan. He was one of the most celebrated musicians in Canadian history, and he breathed life into our country and folk scenes in the 60s and 70s. There's a whole lot to be said about Lightfoot's legacy, but I don't really want to write an obituary. So what I'm going to do in this video is just talk a little bit about what Gordon Lightfoot and his music have meant to me. Growing up in Ontario, Lightfoot's music was absolutely seminal to my childhood. It was the soundtrack to long drives up Highway 17 to Sault Ste. Marie, where my mother's family lived. It was the soundtrack to rainy storms at her family cottage on Lake Superior, just a few miles from where the Edmund Fitzgerald sank, forever to be memorialized in Lightfoot's song. The lake, it is said, never gives up her dead when the skies of November turn gloomy. Lightfoot was my introduction to folk music, which remains one of my dearest passions to this day. Long before I'd ever heard the name Bob Dylan, I could sing every word to Lightfoot's Canadian Railroad trilogy. That song remains one of my favorite Gordon Lightfoot songs to this day. For a long time, it's helped inform my relationship to my own identity as a Canadian, even as that relationship has changed in recent years. There was a time in this fair land when the railroad did not run. When the wild majestic mountains stood alone against the sun. A few years back, I even did a piece with the CBC discussing the song, and that remains some of my favorite work I've ever done to this day. As a country so close to the cultural giant that is America, it's really hard for Canada to create its own cultural identity. Even some of our greatest singers, like Joni Mitchell and Neil Young, have been adopted by the States and now live in a sort of split cultural custody. But Gordon Lightfoot was Hours. He was a singer who wove Canada into his songs, both explicitly and implicitly. His lyrics are filled with natural scenes and wide expanses, words that I think you can really only understand if you've seen the North Shore of Lake Superior, driven across Saskatchewan, or froze your ass off in an Ottawa winter. It's hard to put my finger on why exactly Pussy Willow's Cattails feels more Canadian in my head than any other nature-focused song, but I know that it does. Pussy willows, cattails, soft winds and roses, rain pools in the woodland, water to my knee. There's something about Gord's voice that feels as vast and ageless as the Canadian shield. Pussy willows, cattails, soft winds and roses. Every time I hear him sing the opening line of Early Morning Rain, my heart just melts. In the early morning rain, with a dollar in my head. Gord's warm baritone absorbs you and leaves you hooked on every melody. And as Canadian as he is, there's also just a profound humanity to his songs. Early Morning Rain is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's an aching piece of loneliness and sorrow, framed on the cold backdrop of advancing modernity. You can jump a jet plane Like you can a freight train So I best be on my way In the early morning in many of his finest moments, Lightfoot was a journalist and a documentarian, following the folk traditions of Woody Guthrie or Pete Seeger. Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald and the Railway Trilogy are both examples of this, but I think his best piece of journalistic writing was Black Day in July. Black Day in July Motor City Madness has touched the countryside I remember being utterly entranced by that song as a child with its chaotic drums and the newspaper headline style of lyricism. In the office of the president, the deed is done, the troops are sent. There's really not much choice, you see. It looks to us like anarchy. And then the tanks go rolling in to patch things up as best they can. There is no time to hesitate. The speech is made, the dues can wait. That song tells the story of 1967's Detroit race riots. It's filled with tension and drama, culminating in a pained plea for brotherhood and solidarity. Why can't we all be brothers? Why can't we live in peace? 
But the hands of the have-nots keep falling out of reach. Black Day in July. As a child, that song taught me about the Detroit race riots. And really, it was probably one of my earliest introductions to the very idea of racial inequality. There's countless more Lightfoot songs that I could gush about. Did She Mention My Name is just such a perfect piece of pop romanticism. Is the home team still on fire? Do they still win all the games? And by the way, did she mention my name? Sundown is his biggest hit for a reason. It's got a brilliant melodic hook and lyrics that paint a melancholic picture of a dying relationship. Sundown, you better take care if I find you've been creeping round my back Song for a Winter's Night has some of the most beautiful fingerstyle guitar you'll ever hear, emulating the feel of quiet snowfall glistening against a dark night. The lamp is burning low upon my tabletop. The snow is soft. I'm Not Saying is a perfectly constructed courtship song with a subversively honest tilt. I can't say I'll always do the things you want me to. I'm not saying I'll be true, but I'll try. If you're Canadian, you probably don't need me to tell you all of this. But if you're not, I really recommend you do a dive into Lightfoot's catalog in his honor. If you're looking for a place to start, I'm not usually one to recommend compilation albums, but the album that I grew up listening to is Gord's Gold. That's an album that spans the first decade of his career, and I think it'll make you fall in love with Gordon Lightfoot. I know that it did for me. So in the words of Lightfoot himself, let's give a drink to the living and a toast to the dead. Rest in peace, Gord, and thank you for all that you gave us.